But glad you're here. We're excited of an um, upcoming new season uh, for us, and we've had a really spirited week the past couple of practices. Really be pleased about it, really pleased about the chemistry of our basketball team and, and what the future holds for us. Coach, what kind of things did you learn from last year, the experience of going through all of that you guys went through? Well, I think these guys learned how to overcome adversity, uh, to be able to bounce back and move forward quickly. Uh, I think that's the key for a basketball team, but it's also obviously a key in life. You when, to, when, when, when was the first actual team practice? Have you already had official practice? We have. We have. Um, women's basketball rules, 40 days from your start date, you get 30 opportunities. Uh, so Sunday would have been, we used that as an off day, and we started on Monday. Okay. Uh, looking at the roster, I mean, what really stands out, you got a lot of newcomers and a lot of old senior veterans. Yeah no longer here. I mean, does that kind of give you a lot of excitement? There's a lot of opportunity with these brand new pieces. A great opportunity. Uh, I'm very pleased with our upperclassmen leadership, but also in the uh, younger kids, their ability to have picked up on things really quickly. They understand uh, what our team standards are, what our core values are. They've embraced that. This freshman class was the highest ranked recruiting class that we've ever had at ECU. And uh, they've come on the core of super mature, um, uh, I, what I talk about is are they, are they able to learn quickly and be able to strain through activity, and they're able to do that. I've uh, been really pleased with their progress so far. Any idea or thought where scoring might come from, you know, considering how? <laughs> It'd be great, these two guys, these two guys. Uh, we, I mean, we've had a lot of kiddos that have scored the ball big time. Um, you know, we don't have an uh, inability to score. The key is, is that with how we play offensively, we're going to get them open shots. Um, and then how we are able to attack the offensive glass is going to be huge uh, for them to get high percentage stickbacks. No Jada, no Itiana, like Ronnie. Who? Who? Oh, well, yeah, those guys, yeah. Uh -huh. Right. You know, I guess it's tough when you lose players of that caliber. Well, you know, I, with what we do, we, we are a program, not a basketball team. So what I can say for sure is that what they have done is just paved the way for us to continue to – uh, springboard off the successes that they've had here and we appreciate all they've done and you know Jada's continuing her professional career right now in Israel and um, IT's finishing up her uh, athletic career at ECU and then will continue to do whatever it is that she chooses probably in professional format in one of the two ways I'm sure and uh, she's been a huge supporter of us but these guys have, have been in there working every single day and part of the reason that Jada and IT were so good is somebody was guarding them every single day in practice and somebody was pushing them every single day in practice. And so what I think you're about to see is those people um, who were helping those guys get better are now about to have the opportunity um, to showcase their talents and help us win a whole bunch of basketball games. What do you think of the non-conference schedule that you've been able to put together this season? Pleased. Um, I think we've done a much better job this season than in years past with um, being back in Menji's Coliseum a little bit. Uh, and then strategic uh, tournaments and road games uh, and road tests. And, and my hope is that it prepares us uh, and our young team early on so when conference play comes that we're peaking at the right time. See, because you guys have a power five opponent coming in. I don't think – we talked to Jeff last week. He was saying that's been a big struggle. Is it equally as much of a struggle for you guys to try and do the same thing? Have those power five opponents come? Well, Auburn was a home-home for us. You know, so we went there last season and now they're on the return. Big, big game. Exciting game. What have you learned about the makeup of this team when you have just one starting returner? Obviously, you haven't been able to practice as much. It's really just starting. But what can you, can you tell us about the makeup of this new? Well, first, um, they're happy group. And they really enjoy one another. If you see any of our team pictures, everybody um, seems to be getting along. You can see the chemistry from the photos. You can see the chemistry when they're out in the community. Uh, we're right at surpassing all of our community service goals already this season. They're out and active. And, and obviously it's about impacting the Greenville community, but it's also about the opportunity for these guys to spend extra time with one another. Um, and so when you can see that chemistry and that bond starting to develop off the court. Um, and then when you start looking on the court, I mean, I like the fact we've got people who can shoot the ball. We've got leadership at the point guard position. We have slashers that can get to the rim. Um, and then I think we're going to have a really disciplined group um, that's able to every day take a, a great pride in putting on the East Carolina jersey. And that's what I think is, is different about this group th than others is we have 13 kiddos, and when they put that jersey on, they take great pride in wearing purple and gold. 
the seniors and then even if you throw Gaffney in as a graduate student senior um, all have different backstories and, and different things and, and what are they gelling in a way? It, some chance it's a second chance, a final chance, even for Khadijah. I mean, they all start at different schools and are now here for one last go round. however they, they kind of got here, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that these kids are in a in a, a rate of like, oh, man, this is my last chance to do it at any stretch of the imagination. Uh, these two guys probably just um, didn't make the right decision the first time and got another opportunity as far as a, a college student and getting a degree and I mean get get her to talk about what degree she's getting Lord have mercy I don't even know what she's doing she's too smart I can't even talk to her if it's not about basketball but um she's already we already got a job opportunity making way more money than I make I mean she's rolling right now she's rolling so talk to her about those kind of cool things that East Carolina's opening the door uh, for her just after basketball is over and then the her talent and what she's able to do here and you know, Gabby's story is incredible, what a, an amazing family, an amazing background. And those are the stories with these guys. And then, you know, what I just am so thankful for is getting an opportunity every day to come and work with them. And so whatever that previous story is and now seeing what they want to do next and watching them do that and hopefully part of helping them grow uh, to be able to go accomplish those things. What have you learned about conference play? Uh, playing in the American, obviously UConn, the headliner every year, but... There were a lot of games last year, nail-biting finishes, that the record could be a little bit flip-flopped if things had finished a little bit differently in those final few minutes. Yeah. It was a great league. Uh, it's a league that's very easy to recruit to, um, very uh, fortunate to be in the league. Um, I think that as far as in a recruiting perspective, when we're in the American Conference and we're recruiting against the ACC schools, it's helped us. There's no doubt about it. UConn being in the league, it's helped us. A lot of people say, well, oh, you guys get to play UConn every year. And I'm, no, no, no. We've played them six times in two years. We don't just get to play them once. <laughs> We're there a whole bunch. So um, it's been great. It's been great. And I think it's a, a challenge. Uh, I think you've got to do that to be able to prepare for postseason play. And that's our goal every single year is postseason. It's no secret that UConn graduated that entire class that it had. How much for not just you guys, but the conference, how important is this year and an opportunity to make up ground in the Huskies? Well, Right now, we have a lot of brand new players that need a lot of attention. So my immediate focus is not January, February. My immediate focus is right now. And so I'm trying to get these kids to understand, get 1% better today and the next day, gel as a basketball team. Um, and then that's the, where the focus lies. You've mentioned shooters a few times. We're so used to Jada and Devon and the, those people shooting the ball, who are some of the shooters, the people that we haven't seen maybe shoot a, a lot of shots that, that you're identifying to? She can shoot it really well. And uh, what I want to brag about to Ray is this, her work ethic. She's in this gym working on it um, all the time. And so impressive. I'm finishing up and we've had an event last night, dinner with some of our boosters and I'm changing my clothes really quickly and there's Gabby still in the gym working out after practice. So just culturally, you know, the, the kids and the ability to, to make shots, a lot of it is what I talked about when we got this beautiful practice facility, the accessibility of getting in there, um, being able to get extra shot reps. I'm, we've got um, um, Alexis Cortez, one of our freshmen. She's a re I think she's going to be a really uh, important uh, spot-up shooter for us. She's proven that so far uh, early on. And, and all of our kids have been here. You know, I talked about we just started practice on Monday, but we've been training all summer. So since summer session two, all of our players have been back and from a lifting and individual workout perspective. And um, we've had a really incredible summer. And, you know, just some of the injuries and a lot of the st summer has been put in getting everybody back on the court healthy. I mean, so Gabby's been squatting and got her, her knee rolling and healthy. And so Khadijah and same thing with some of those things. Those nagging injuries kind of been lagging on. I think we use the summer to heal up. And um, so excited that when we went into practice, that everybody's out there and we're competing. We don't have a bunch of people sitting on the sideline. Felt great from a coaching perspective. Khadija, as someone who gets asked to kind of run the show a little bit or run it in the backcourt, um, how does this team look different stylistically with all the new parts? I think a lot of the times, like we discussed, Jada and IT leaving, but I think that we have so many new pieces that are going to contribute in a big way. I think we bring a lot of energy. Our chemistry off and on the court I think is going to be something that you guys are going to be really excited to see. And I don't know, it's just like the energy is so different and it's 
just like going to be, I think it's going to be a great year. I'm excited. Kind of like I asked Coach, the senior class is, is different and all coming in at different times. Mm -hmm. Have you bonded with any of the other transfers that have come in, even for this year, not only y'all two, but how is that coming along as, as far as the three or four seniors? I mean, yes, the seniors, but I just think our team in general, we gel so well. Like, it's unlike anything I've ever been a part of, and I'm just really excited to continue to build that chemistry as we continue to practice going into games. And I don't think we can say that it's just the seniors bonding or just the freshmen. I think we just have – like a beautiful chemistry as a group. No, what, what things do you do off the court to make sure with all those new players coming in that you guys have that good chemistry? I think it's funny that we spend like all day, you know, we're practicing, we're in the gym, but we still want to hang out with each other after. Like we'll grab dinner or we'll just go and like hang out at the pool or we'll watch movies. And I think that's just like really cool. Even though we're around each other all day, we still can't get enough of each other. Gabby, what was the first time uh, you met Coach? Because you were obviously at ACC school and weren't you guys in a tournament together like prior to ECU? Um, actually, the first time I saw um, East Carolina play, I was at I was in high school. I had uh, recently committed to Georgia Tech, but uh, I had never really heard of the program. But I was actually kind of interested when they were actually hanging in the game with UNC. And I, I, her nephew actually drew me towards her. <laughs> he was a feisty little something um, on the sideline. And then like I, I, I thought it was her son, actually. but. Um, after things didn't go as planned at Georgia Tech, uh, they were one of the first schools to hit me up, and I kind of did like my research on them. And I was like, wait, you know, that was a program I thought was kind of interesting after, well, while I was in high school. So let me, you know, see what they're talking about, see if it's something interesting or that it will fit my game. So, coach, you did that, that straight. It was your nephew that was. Over yeah, he got, yeah, basically, you know. <laughs> we use whatever we can get, Josh, at this point. The, uh, you you wore the rec specs. Yeah. Okay. Well, she need you know and we have to ask her like she's a senior yeah. and I have to make sure it's contacts in now. So she had these rec specs on and I can remember sitting beside my assistant coach going, "Why don't we have her on our team? That's who we need on our team." And he's like, "Well, she's going to Georgia Tech." And I go, "Well, she should be at East Carolina." And then what happens? Thankful, so thankful that Gabby's at ECU now. But uh, Seth gets full credit. He'll want you know he'll want a bonus. He'll want a signing bonus for yeah. that. Or, or some sort of like payment. He's gonna hear this. He's gotten at that age now that it's no longer like high five, buddy. It's like, do I get a check for this or what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Gabby, how fun was it for you to play for a team that has so much possibility? I mean, with one returning starter, you could go anywhere. I mean, I'm sure, coach, you're having the same excitement about kind of we could do anything. I mean, is that cool for you to play for a team like that? Um, you have to see us to understand it. Like, it's really something different. Um. I think I'm more uh, on the anxious side. Than, I don't really get excited like that. So I think I'm more on the anxious side to see like where we've come from to where we're going to be. Um, just every day in practice, seeing the improvement of just the smallest things or, the, or people catching on to things that they may have missed in the past. It's, it's exciting to see. And I, I'm all down for the personal growth of somebody else. Especially, like Coach said, getting 1% better, that's always important. Because in the long run, if you add up 1% here and 1% there, you know, eventually you have to get to 100. So that's our everyday goal is trying to get to 100%. How comfortable are you now? You know, you've been here for a few years, and obviously being up here, you're going to be a big part of the team. How are you feeling just with your role and maybe compared to where you were a few years ago? I mean, I pride myself on my own personal growth as well. Like I, I tell everybody I'm still growing as an individual. But my teammates, they, they push me every day to step out of my comfort zone. Um, as a child, I was always told, like, somebody has to step up and lead. And uh, I think that this role wasn't just given to me. It's something that I earned. But I think not only from Coach Macy, but my teammates, like, they understand the work that I have to put in. But I think it comes with being comfortable. You have to be comfortable in order to step up and lead a group. And um, everybody's coachable and everybody's willing to listen. So that's exciting and that's fun to be around, you know. And I just think that with the help of them, it makes me a better leader and it makes things so much easier on me. Coach, I'm, I'm hearing that this team is gelling maybe more than other teams off the court, on the court. And maybe that's not the case in previous years. There may have been some outliers or having to sit players or just off the court issues, not as a trend, but it happens. How important is it that you're seeing this team, that they have this unique 
kind of just bond. Yeah. I need to move this. Yeah. My voice projects. I don't think we have an issue. But, um, you know, I, I, would, I would probably say it's a youthful excitement and a level of um, anticipation. So a lot of times you get to the, the college level, it's a, oh, man, I got to go to practice. It's something that, you know, oh, I've, been doing, I, I've been doing this as a head coach 12 years, right? And it's like, well, I've done this before. This has a whole different feel to it um, because it feels very new. It feels very fresh. Um, it feels very uh, open to learn, right? And it's going, uh, I'm able to start as a teaching perspective. I'm starting over teaching our system and how we want to play offensively, how we want to play defensively, We're implementing some new things. Um, I feel energized and excited to work with them. And uh, it's just like a sponge every day. And they're going, tell me some more, tell me some more, tell me about that. I've never heard that before. These are all new things. And so um, I get fired up to go out to the practice court every day. Um, as our staff, we've broken it down into many segments. And so right now we talk about we have five opportunities. We have five opportunities to touch these kids this week. And we've got to give them everything we've got in those five opportunities. And we've divided that up uh, in every week as we go leading up to the first game. And so my hope is that the excitement that I feel as a coach walking onto the floor, that the kids will feel the exact same way. And as long as they feel the exact same way, then really, really good things will happen as we progress through the season. With the freshmen specifically, do you have those moments, especially now, where like one gets – something you know you kind of see they get it maybe one is a little slow you know they progress in different ways are you kind of seeing that happen you know in these first few practices or something? well it's incredible I mean you look at the freshmen and they're they're just now starting to see how their progress is going to go what I love is I've been around these guys going on three years and so the, even the the progress they've made from coming in as 19 year olds and 20 and 22 year olds now uh, is incredible and so that's the joy of coaching is the growth that you get to experience from 19 to 22 years old, 18 to 22 years old, is um, keeps me young for sure. And uh, you know you can't get you can't get too disappointed with what what is truly minor setbacks as they're growing um, into young women. Y'all really do look giddy. <laughs> it's like a first date. I don't know. <laughs> Three years in, that's a good sign, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're seven, coach. Does it feel like that? Josh, you're the one getting older. You know, that's all I <laughs> – you were a giddy 18-year-old. It wasn't long ago. Uh, it is – it is uh, – no, I'm going to tell you, I I'm absolutely uh, love it. Obviously, East Carolina is my dream job. And to be in North Carolina coaching hoops, there's nothing better for a North Carolina girl. So, um, thankful to be here for sure.